Okay, today going to do a quick one on PAL v VFOs versus Siltronics VFO. Uh, basically, the difference between a Siltronics and a PAL is PALs have a crystal oscillator. They are crystal controlled and they are very stable. Um, some of the PALs have the crystal on the outside some of them the crystal is internal but either way um, all PL PAL uh, VFOs sometimes they call VCOs uh, variable crystal oscillator and this one they call a VFO <laughs> don't know why they uh, changed the name but anyway the PALs have a crystal and they're crystal control and they're very stable you can use them on a SSB because um, they're stable enough to do that and Siltronics VFOs, uh, they don't use a crystal. They just use a bunch of um, capacitors and coils. And here's the schematic of the Siltronics VFO. And over here is all the capacitors and coil that they use to um, vary the frequency and make up the frequency. A lot of them in there. And the original first Siltronics VFO to model 80 it had one band and no extra crystal slots the model 80 only went up from negative 5 to 40 uh, channel 40 if we're going by channels uh, so what's negative 5 26.925 or something to channel 40 27.405 in megahertz and that was the 80 and then on top is the 90 because people were like hey you know uh, 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 40 ain't really enough channels you know when the extras came out and the 40s came out people wanted more so the channel the 90 uh, model 90 VFO they went from one band to two band um, and if you see the switch there for CB and high frequency whereas the 80 does not have that the 80 is just one band only and not only did they add the um, switch for uh, CB and high frequency, they did add three crystal banks. So you can stick in a crystal in there and it will be controlled by the frequency of the crystal. But that won't be variable. So you basically have either crystal control if you get the right crystal. Let's say you're on channel 6 and you get a crystal for channel 6. You would go to... Um, crystal one here and you would be on channel six and the VFO would be inactive um, HF would be the high frequency band which be the top band labeled HF right and then the lower band is CB for your uh, negative um, five or so to about um, channel 40 on the lower band and again with the extended band which the 80 doesn't have but the HF you would go from um, from about 35 to channel 90 on the uh, Siltronics VFOs however the Siltronics VFOs again were not crystal controlled so they drifted they were okay to use on AM uh, you know if you had a good one but on sideband, they drifted enough where it would throw you off. You're always fine-tuning on sideband. So they weren't really good on sideband. However, the uh, PAL VFOs with the crystal control was great on sideband. But they have a limitation too. There's only so much variance that you can move a crystal. Hence, that uh, on all the PAL VFOs, there's only one band. Because you can move the uh, crystal only so far. And with the original PAL VFOs, the first versions, they only went from channel negative 2 to about channel 36. That was it. That was their full range. So when people bought VFOs, they're like, hey, I want to go further than that. You know, especially the 40 channels coming out and people are going to 38 sideband or 45 sideband. You know, people were like, hey, I, I want more. I want the uppers. So what PAL did, since you couldn't move that crystal uh, very far, you know, that, that's just electronically 
very hard to do is to move a crystal, you know, like 50, 100 channels off its frequency. So what PAL did was in the later versions, they just moved the frequency up. So and started, instead of starting at negative 2, if you bought a later version of the PAL, it would start at negative 12. That's as low as you could go with the VFO. And it would go up to channel 55 in the later versions. Um, all the rest of the different versions of the PAL are different frequencies. Like some are made for 11 meg and 5 meg, you know, 20 some meg, 30 meg, all that. So there are versions of that. However, as far as their uh, range, that's all you got with the PAL VFO. So you're limited by that. Because you can only move a crystal uh, so far before it stops um, um, oscillating, right? There's the crystal in the PAL VFO schematic, and that's the PAL VFO schematic. Um, a lot more to it than the Siltronics uh, schematic, right? The PAL uh, VFO, the schematic, um, it regulates the voltage just with Zener diodes so it's um, very regulated voltage on the power supply and crystal controlled you know a bunch of controlled oscillators in it where the um, Siltronics just you know basic stuff right um, there is a Zener on there for the Siltronics and that actually goes bad and then to kill the VFO when I worked on a few and then all these caps to move the frequency especially on the uh, one with the dual band but other than that not that much to it a couple oscillators not nearly as complicated as the PAL VFO so to wrap it up PAL VFOs very stable limited range Siltronics VFOs okay for AM not good for SSB and a uh, pretty wide range and then since I couldn't find one handy they also made the Glenn uh, VFO back in the day the Glenn VFO had a bunch of coils and caps and had band uh, switches in it and the Glenn VFO could work on just about any frequency from 5 to 30 megahertz um, so you can uh, uh, you didn't need a specific model with a Glenn. Um, you could uh, tune and you know use the band switch and tune it for any frequency, just about for any CB made. However, the Glens, though they could be used for any uh, frequency, which was really good, they drifted a lot. Um, they had so much stuff in them, and they were so complicated. They went through the band switch and. If you know on amplifiers, band switches uh, uh, go bad and the band switches on the Glenn would uh, get resistance in there and it would um, cause your frequency to vary. And also it had so many coils in there and they were very, very fragile and they move, they bounce. It causes your frequency to go all over the place. The coil would break and then you lose your output. So the Glenn was much more complicated. Then it had a uh, frequency counter with a variable offset so the Glenn was much much more more uh, complicated but the Glenn drifted a lot uh, it broke a lot but when it was working uh, it was a great VFO for AM even though it drifted some and on SSB a Glenn VFO was useless uh, pretty much as it stood it, it was just too much going on and it drifted a lot for SSB but anyway that's gonna be it for this one PAL VFOs uh, very stable crystal control not a lot of bandwidth and then a Siltronics VFO decent bandwidth one band you know not programmable like the Glenn but uh, Siltronics tend to drift some okay on AM not SSB this one will work on SSB but you don't get a lot of channels the Glenn you get a ton of channels um, and can go with any radio you want but it drifts a lot and it's uh, very complicated, hard to work on. Alright, that's it for this one. Bye.